everyone, hello members and guests. Today I would like to speak about a very important but controversial topic, which is immigration. And um, specifically, I want to talk about what I consider the most disadvantaged immigrant categories. And to start, I want to let you know how difficult it is to legally immigrate to the United States, specifically if you come from Mexico, Philippines, India, or China. The reason why is because those four countries have a lot of population. And the United States Immigration Services limits the amount of visas that someone can receive, some like people from one country can receive per year. So uh, let's take a look at this table. The type of visas are uh, divided in different categories. The ones that I'm gonna talk about today are F1, F2B, F3, and F4. If you come from anywhere in the world, you are in this category. If you come from China, India, Mexico, or the Philippines, you are under a different category. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me start with F1. F1 is for unmarried sons and daughters of US citizens. And I have an example, for example. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jose was a citizen of Mexico. But he became a permanent resident on 20, um, 2007. When he became a permanent resident, he brought with him two of his children, the ones that were minors at the time. But his daughter, Anna, couldn't come to the US because she was 22 years old. So she was older, couldn't come in the, in the same package, we'll call it. Okay, on 2012, Five years later, he became a U.S. citizen and filed a petition for his daughter, Anna. When will Anna receive her permanent residency? As you can, as you can see, Jose and Anna, they came, well, Jose came from Mexico. Anna is a uh, citizen of Mexico. So how long will it take her? I'm going back to this um, table. So immigration, is processing applications that were filed on August 1st, 1997. So if we do the math, and if they are working one year for each calendar year, the earliest date that she can receive her permanent residence is in 2020, 20, yeah, 2017. So USCIS is working on applications on 97 if the person is coming from Mexico. But what if we change the facts? All the facts are the same except that Anna is a citizen of, I said Colombia, but it could be anywhere in the, in the world. When will Anna receive her permanent residency? The earliest date is 2020. So there's seven years different. That's F1 category, unmarried sons and daughters. The F2B category is for unmarried, oh, the, the only difference between F1 and F2B is that this is for permanent residents. So I have another example. Maria received her permanent resident card in 2012. She filed a petition for her son, Daniel, who was 30 years old. Daniel is a citizen of Mexico. When will he be able to legally immigrate to the US? Okay, USCIS is processing applications filed on September 97. So Danielle needs to wait 15 years from today. So the earliest date is in 2034. <coughs> and all, this, all the facts are the same, but Danielle is a citizen of another country. In this case, I said Syria. So he doesn't have a wait time. He can legally come to the US in 2019. So there is a 
little disadvantage for people that come from either China, India, Mexico, or, or the Philippines. The F3 category, married sons and daughters of US citizens. So this is the same example that I give you on the first place, but now Anna, Jose's daughter, got married. So she's no longer unmarried son and daughter of US citizen. Now she's married and she is on another category. Um, when is she going to receive her permanent residency? The early state, 2028. When she was single, it was 2027. So it changed one year. And what if Anna is a citizen of another country, Costa Rica, for example? Then she will receive her um, her permanent residency in 2025, 2025. So uh, there's like three year difference here. At the F fourth category, brothers and sisters of U.S. citizens. So in this example, Frank is a U.S. citizen who filed an application for his brother Carlos on 2016. Carlos is a citizen of the Philippines. When will Carlos be able to obtain his permanent resident card? USCIS is processing application filed on January 1, 1996. He needs to wait 20 more years. And this is the same example, but he's a citizen of Italy. And USCIS, uh, the, the only difference is he's a citizen of Italy and he needs to wait 14 years. The difference between those two are at least six years. And this is if if USCIS is processing a full year at a time. It can take longer. To be honest, I've been checking those tables and they haven't moved in the last couple of years. So uh, this is, in, in, my, in retrospect, I can say that um, there are, sorry, there are 17, 17 million, and, uh, yeah, sorry. I need to check the numbers. But 17 million documented people and 50, 53% come from Mexico and 17% from, come from Asia. Do you have, now do you have an idea why? Maybe because they're the most disadvantaged immigrant categories. And that's it, thank you. Maria's gonna get the standard double cheeseburger evaluation today. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom of the cheeseburger. We unwrapped the cheeseburger. This was neat and threw away the wrapping. Uh, basically, the presentation was prepared and tested well in advance, and that's a great way to start off a speech, is to make sure that you've got your PowerPoint, that when you push the button, it goes, which was really good. Okay, so the, now the next thing, the, the foundation of the speech was it built on a solid foundation that was acceptable and interesting to people here? Absolutely, it was very well organized. I thought it was, uh, don't need to spend a lot of time talking about that. It was a logical presentation based on facts. And a little emotion here and there, but mostly facts, and that was great. So what I liked about the content was that it was very factual. What I felt could be improved on the content was the PowerPoint, the way the PowerPoint was organized, you kept having to go back. And it probably would have been a little better if you could organize the, if you could have organized the content so that you didn't ever have to go back, but that you could like take a picture out of the table mm -hmm. and put it on the next slide and a picture and put it on the next slide so that it's right there and you don't have to go back. I would also suggest that you get someone to drive the PowerPoint for you. There's Dave and he's good at it. <laughs> okay, uh, your voice was wonderful. And I like to say that in terms of talking about the top part of the bun, which is just the presentation skills, your voice was full and passionate and committed. And you had a lot of vocal variety and I felt you made very good eye contact. In terms of style of presentation, which is the top burger, I thought that you did a better job than I've ever seen you do before. I also didn't think that you looked at the slides excessively. You know, you've seen people that just sit there and read the slides. Now you did have to refer to the slide because of the way it was organized. Maybe it would have been better if you'd been able to organize it slightly differently. If you could just move from slide to slide and when someone else is driving it for you, just 
look at the slide to make sure where you are and then come back and talk to us so you don't have to keep looking at the slides. The way it was organized, you kind of had to. Uh, I would pr make sure that you practice because you wouldn't have had to reach for words if you had really practiced this. A few times you were sort of reaching for the right word to use. And, eh, you know, who am I to criticize? I don't speak two languages. Well, I do, but not well. Okay, so uh, you had mentioned that you needed to check the numbers. Should have done that in advance. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you had practiced, you would have known that you needed to do that in advance. And so just make it simple. Try not to look at the PowerPoint. You, you, you did not do that to excess, and that was pretty impressive. And I'd like to say how much I enjoyed the speech. And you delivered a message that we all needed to hear. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you.